Hello, I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey. Welcome to my vlog, Crafting with Shutter Monkey. Today is Saturday the 24th of October. You may not see this until Monday the 26th. That's probably when I'll get it uploaded onto YouTube. And as it's the week before Halloween, I've got my wee cat ears on. So I'm keeping these on for the full episode. You're stuck with these. I'm not taking them off. Anyway, I've done something a wee bit dangerous. I brought in a cup of tea because you get a wee bit, your voice gets a wee bit hoarse when you're talking for so long. Well, mine does because I don't really talk for that long, but I'll probably end up spilling it and squealing and it'll be going everywhere. But I can cut that out, can't I? But this is what I'm drinking today it's violet petal tea, and um, it's from a company called Rosevere Tea. This company are based in Edinburgh and they, they do lovely teas, they, they sell online, they have an online shop too. But their teas are lovely. This is my second favourite one, I think. I bought a rose tea, a black rose tea, the first time I was there. And that's my favourite one. That's the one I drink the most. So I thought I would try this one. When we were through two weeks ago, I bought this. Give this one a wee try. And it's really nice. <coughs> try not to knock my tea over. Anyway, a wee bit more about me. I live in Ayrshire, which is in the west coast of Scotland. I live in a wee town called Stewarton. It's in East Ayrshire. And in East Ayrshire, they, they normally celebrate Halloween on the last Friday of the month, which is actually the day before Halloween, but sometimes it can be about almost a week before Halloween they celebrate. I don't know why they do that in East Ayrshire. I don't know if it was to do with, that was payday, Friday, the last Friday of the month was payday, or maybe they thought the kids are going to be hyped up and sugar, give them the weekend to come back down. I don't, I, I honestly don't know. In Kilmarnock, the last, it's the last Friday of the month they normally celebrate Halloween and that's when the kids go out and, or dressed up for Halloween. This year they'll not be doing that. I think it's just a pumpkin trail. They've asked people to put out pumpkins and stuff in the windows so the kids can go on a pumpkin trail rather than coming to the doors. So a wee bit different this year, but hey ho, isn't everything? I live in Stewarton with my husband and my daughter and my cat. My cat's probably the fav my most favourite person that I live with. Let's be honest, can't be bothered with other two humans, but I do like my cat. Um, and like most households, my husband's working from home just now. He's actually been working from home for last September, which limits the amount of computer time I can get because he's really greedy with the computer and never lets me own it. And my daughter, she's a student at the University of Glasgow. She's studying molecular and cellular biology and she's in her third year at uni. She's doing it all online. This, this semester's all online, obviously, because of COVID-19. And the workload she's got is just phenomenal. I, I don't know how she would be doing the workload that she's got if she was actually travelling back and forward to Glasgow every day. She spends a lot of time stuck in meetings and tutorials and lectures and online stuff. A lot, a lot of time doing that. Anyway, where else can you find me? If you're lucky, because obviously you can't come to my house to have a cup of tea. So where else can you find me? Um, you can find me on Ravelry. I'm Shutter Monkey Designs on there. Um, I'm also Shutter Monkey Designs on Lovecrafts too. I have a, an Etsy shop, that's Shutter Monkey Designs, just some handmade bags, stitch markers, some patchwork and quilting cushions, things like that are on there. You can also find me on Instagram, um, we Shutter Monkey on there. And also I have a Facebook page, that's Shutter Monkey Designs too. So anyway, we'll get straight onto the knitting section. I feel like I've got loads and loads of socks to show you today. I'll just slide these over. So here we go, knitting. So. This is my Stealac sock pattern, inspired by the Stealac shawl. This shawl has been on Ravelry for quite a few years now. I think it's maybe 2013, 2014 that was published. And these socks were inspired by, again, the shawl. I'm hoping to release the pattern for these socks on Thursday the 29th of October. Again, these will be a free download. I've got one more tutorial video to do, just to show you how you... Um, just combine in your colours. There's wee twists in the colours so you don't have to keep cutting your yarn and putting it back in. So I've got one wee, one more tutorial video to show you how to do that. And then I'll get this show I'll I'll get this sock pattern published. Okay. But the details are all on Ravelry. If you want to find out anything more about the socks, what you need to knit them so you're ready to go when I release the sock pattern. I'm going to show you that side because that one's slightly different. Just the way the striping and the, the ball went. There was only one ball of the, the drops to light that I used and I tried to get it matching but it just wouldn't match. 
so they're slightly different both socks okay but all the details are on Ravelry if you want to know what you need to to knit a pair of these okay you'll be ready to go if you need to get your, your supplies together before I release the pattern but hopefully all going well 29th of October they'll be there um, and just like the other two shawls I've got a mini one so this is Blair the Badger again cool crafting she's modelling this one for you isn't she lovely now the, this, the mini shawl I actually used the same yarn that was the artisanal Aaron it's a heavier weight yarn <clears throat> it's a heavier weight yarn than the other two mini shawls were knitted in but it was leftovers from other shawls that I had made it's lovely and soft and it's got a nice wee lace edging around the bottom you probably won't see that on this one because it's it's hanging down too far but it's got a nice blue edging around the bottom a nice wee blue lace edging around there so there you go that's Blair and she's got a nice wee polka dot dress on so you can get wee pockets in it look these patterns are really good they're really detailed worth taking a wee look at if you haven't made any before right anyway <clears throat> Steel act, shawl pat Steel act sock pattern that will be coming out as soon as I can hopefully Thursday the 29th um, the other ones are you've already saw those That this is the old shell ones that pattern's released and so is the Helter Skelter so you can go get them they're both out they've been they've been released and they're both online now and I don't know if I ever say this but they are free downloads they're not going to cost you so on you go get downloading get knitting make great Christmas presents probably shouldn't say the C word should I it's not even Halloween yet anyway this is the Fanco pattern that one's currently been test knitted just now and the next one that I'm looking for test knitters for the next pattern is this this is my, my chevron socks and I'm looking for test knitters for this one ideally it would be great if you could use a self-striping ball of yarn and there's the wee contrasting colour for your heels, your toes and your cuff but you could do them it's the same so you just have stripes stripes along your heel, stripes in the top too if you want and stripes in your toe you could use the one the one ball, ball of yarn you don't have to have the contrasting if you don't want but this is a medium sized sock traditionally 64 stitches but you do increase a wee bit because you have to allow for the, the zigzagging of your pattern it takes some more stitches to keep the circumference the right width to fit over your heel and on round your, round your foot, round your, round your leg okay so I'm looking for some test knitters for this if anybody's interested send me a wee email I'll pop details below so you know how to contact me okay but that would be great if you could do that and the other one that I'm working on just now is my, my feather and fan socks I'm still working on the second sock but that will be the next one in the next episode I'll show you more about that uh, I'll show you more details about this one I'll be looking for test knitters next time as well if anybody wants to do that this one was obviously inspired I've told you this before haven't I this one was in this one was inspired by old shield because a lot of people think that the old shield pattern they call it feather and fan but it's not it's maybe not so easy to see on here on the screen here but I can show you on the rainbow ones it shows up a wee bit easier um, so this is the rainbow ones that I made for myself you can see it's getting quite a nice a wee swoosh going round the old shell it curves quite nicely but see when you do a rainbow version of the feather and fan this is how it looks I've no longer started these ones okay and I'm only doing a wee shorty one just a wee shorty sock so I've got the grey heel in again, the same way as I did for the... Okay, but I'm just doing a shorty version. But you can see on the front, it's quite a zigzag on it. Can you see that? I've only got, I'm only onto the third colour. Well, fourth, if you include the cuff. But the third colour for the pattern. It is quite a zig. 
it's quite a defined, uh, quite a defined, quite a defined zigzag this one's got rather than the the nice wee curve that's on this one. And I think you can see the difference in how the pattern goes looking at these two. They do have a lot of similarities, there's six decreases and six increases in every pattern repeat, but just that slight difference in how and how you, you you make those decreases and increase it makes quite a difference in the pattern doesn't it i hope you can see that okay right anyway we'll pop these away again don't want don't want all my stitches to fall off my dpns i keep my rainbow socks in my little rainbow dpn cozy so i'm just going to pop these back in here because i don't want all my stitches falling off the needle well they're waiting for me to get back to them Right, I think I've showed you all of those socks there. I'm just going to push this out of the way a wee bit. <clears throat> the other thing I was working on last time that I showed you was... I'm in a fanco, hold on. Helter Skelter. I was making a wee shorty pair of Helter Skelters and I was hoping you would see the stitch pattern a wee bit better at Helter Skelter and round. But the yarn's just a wee bit more... colourful than I thought it was. But I do love them. I love that texture on them. I've actually just... That was some of my leftovers from my Muriel Fence quilt. And I'm just about to kitchen or stitch the toe together in these ones. But I love the texture on it. Although you don't really see the pattern very well, I do love the texture. I mean, that's the bottom of the foot. And I love the texture on that side. I'm really pleased with them. I've still got the second sock to do, so I need to hurry up if I want to have them for Halloween, don't I? But this was the yarn here. This is um, We Sheep Yarns. It's um, Witch's Brew, the colourway. Unfortunately, I don't think Jane's dyeing yarn anymore, so it's not a colourway you would be able to buy. But there's lots of lovely yarn dyers out there, aren't there? I'm sure you'll find something. But really like those. Just love the texture on them. And I better hurry up and get the second one done because I need my wee, I need my wee shorty socks for Halloween. Right, I'm going to pop this away in here. Don't want to drop all those stitches. And the only other socks I was working on over the past... I think I showed you one of these last time, didn't I? Well, I've got two of them done now. I love these. I'm really pleased with how these turned out. And I love these sock blockers as well. I bought these from Tribe Yarns. Now unfortunately when the first one, I only bought one, I never read the, the details right, and I bought one. It was the only, they came individually, it wasn't a set of two. I thought golly they're really cheap, that's a really good price for a set of sock blockers. Well it was only one, silly me. But it came through and it snapped, it snapped across here, across Tower Bridge. And I contacted Tribe Yarns and they sent me out a replacement and I also ordered a, another one so it had a pair. But my husband managed to fix fix this for me. He's glued it together. But they're lovely, aren't they? They're really, really nice. Mary Poppins on it too. And lots of my favourite London landmarks. But I really like them. This is actually the first time I've used them. I've been too scared to use them in case I break them again. But they're there to be used, aren't they? So... Silly to leave them lying. And when I ordered, I ordered a second one because I realised I only had one sock blocker. And then the lady for Tribe Yarns actually sent me out a replacement. So I've ended up with three. Unfortunately, all three of them were broken. <laughs> Every one of them were broken when they arrived, which was a shame. But um, they've all been fixed now. And I've actually got three of these. But I love them. They're really pretty, aren't they? Anyway... I wanted to show you some of my favourite Halloween socks that I've knitted in the past. Um, this is the spider. I don't know how well you're going to see these. The other thing is as well, the, the heels, the bottom of the feet are sometimes a bit faded. It's because I've been wearing them and washing them. Sometimes the way that's wa washed and worn, the yarn's been fading. But this is spider socks. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. If you go and look for it, you'll find it. But I don't know how well you see that on there. I'll show you this one. There's a big spider on it. Turn it around so you can see. Can you see it? I hope you can see that okay. 
can you really see on the wee screen? But there's a spider on there and there's also further down there's little spiders. Do it that way. There's little spiders hanging down. But they hang down at the top. I swish. I need to be careful with this sort blocker. I don't want to break it. This is the third one I've got the same. But there's the three wee spiders hanging down. And you've got the big spider pattern as well. And it's lovely cables at the back. I used some Sweet Georgia yarn for these ones. This was a skein of yarn that I brought back from New York when I was there. For my 40th birthday we went there for a fortnight. So that's my spider ones. And when I knitted both of my socks I changed it about. The big spiders at the bottom in this one. But the big spiders up in the top of the leg on this one. So I changed them about so they were opposite ways. I actually used these socks for my, my knitting test with the SWI. And they scored really highly. There was only a couple of things that she picked up on. She said you had to be careful of those wee spiders. They would maybe rub inside your boots or your shoes. Which is, is, is true. I think in the pattern that they're up here on the leg. The original pattern. And I might have, when I've swapped them about. And there was a, there was a split stitch somewhere. The, the lady doing my test found I'd, I'd split my, my yarn at some point as well. But apart from that, I did get a, a really good pass mark for these. Um. My other favourite Halloween socks are these ones, these ones here, and again they're a wee bit faded at the bottom because they've been washed and worn so many times. But these are my Maleficent socks, this is the Maleficent colourway from No Makers, love this, it's got a wee bit of sparkle to it as well. But this one is, this is the Vanilla Latte pattern, again another free one on Ravelry. Not too much of a pattern on it, I didn't want it to compete with all the colours on my sock. But that's the other one there. Especially at this time of year, I love my Maleficent socks. She's my favourite Disney villain. Some other autumn theme socks that I've got that I was going to share with you are these ones here. This is my Hagrid's pumpkin patch. This was a yarn colour, a yarn dyed by Elm Tree Yarns. But I like these ones. The colour we is called Hagrid's pumpkin patch, and the pattern is Hermione's everyday sock. I usually split my sock yarn into two 50 gram balls and I'm glad I did with this one because <clears throat> I was running out of yarn when I got to the toe so I had to mix in another wee bit of orange I had for another sock. still managed to get some stripes on but it's just as well I'd split it or I would have knitted one sock and then the other one would have been really short. And the last pair of socks I'm going to share with you today, these ones here. These are my Thornfield shop, Thornfield socks. These are by Rachel Coopy. This is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I'll link all the sock patterns below so you can find them if you're looking for them. But this is a lovely pattern. She's got loads of lovely sock designs. And again, they're a bit faded at the bottom just because I've washed and worn them so many times. And there's the other one there. That's the actual, I'd be left over pieces of this that I was able to use in my Hagrid's pumpkin patch socks, so that's what's in the toe of these ones. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to share with you knitting wise was this yarn. This was a yarn club that I signed up for at the beginning of this year and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to hold this all up to show you with it dropping it everywhere. Oh, can you see? I think I've got them all. Can you see them? Aren't they lovely? So we started off back in January with the red one. These are all dyed by Mothy and the Squid. And this was a Sea Life club. We knew it was going to be a rainbow, a rainbow throughout the year. It's quite topical for this year actually, isn't it? And that was all you knew. So, but she dyes loads of lovely colours. So you don't really know what you're getting until it comes through. But anyway, that was January. February and then I think that's March and I've got wee, I've got wee name, names, I've got wee tags written on, well the tags are all on them with the names because they're all sea life themes and they're all based on an animal. This is a masked, this one's a masked butterfly fish, that was April. You can see the rainbow starting to develop can't you? And then you go into May, changing, oh, oh that one's, what am I done? That one goes there. Okay, so that was the first five. 
and then you start going into the darker shade of green and then blues and all the beautiful blues I'm going to stop there, I can't hold that many skeins of yarn up I'm not very good am I? Maybe I should have tied them all together and that would have tied them up with string or something and then that this was the latest one this is the purple there's two more to come and obviously you know they're going to be shades of purple at the very end but I just love them all and I'm not very sure what I was going to do with them obviously you can knit socks you know I, you know I like to knit socks but I was watching a vlog recently in um, Little Workroom Crafts and she's just finished the breathing space sweater and I love it I love it and she's done different colours throughout the, the, the stripes on it and I thought, hmm, I could have a rainbow version, couldn't I? Like a dark grey one with some rainbow stripes in. And I think if I did that, I probably would still get a pair of socks at each of them as well. Because each of those coloured stripes that's going through that, even if you did two or three stripes, it's not going to use a lot of yarn. You've got plenty left over for socks as well. So I think I'm going to do that. I don't normally like signing up for mystery things. Because I like to know what I'm getting. But this wee club has just been lovely. Look at them. And they're lovely. Even advent calendars. I love advent calendars. But then you get to the end of December and I think, what am I going to make with all of these? So really pleased with these. And every month we got a wee, there was a wee card, a wee photograph. What your yarn was, the theme for your yarn. The wee sea leaf, the wee sea life creature that it was based on. With some details in the back. And there was stitch markers and we get a bracelet once in one, one month as well. And oh, it's just been lovely. Only two more to go. I did buy some of Mothy and the Squid's yarn last year. She was doing a, a monthly butterfly. Or a, was it a moth? I, it might have been moths and they might have all been moths. I don't know if they were all, all but moths. There might have been the odd butterfly in there. My daughter's going to get really upset with me if she watches this. But that was three of them. This was um, January's hot moth. February. And then March. Wouldn't they be lovely together if you made a so faded sweater? That's why I bought them. I had to go I didn't find out about this club until maybe June or July last year. But this was the 2019. She was just doing it every month and you could just buy it, whereas the, the Sea Life one this year has been a pre-order. But these are all lovely. And that was some of your other hawk moth ones. But I think some of these she's still got a lot of mothy mothy themed yarns online. But I think they're all moths. The October one last year was a death's head moth. I'm going to knit my daughter some socks with that. You may notice there's a wee bit of a change in the lighting. My camera battery died and I had to go charge it up for a bit. So here we go. Take two. And just before we finish with the knitting section, I'm just going to show you this yarn here. This is um, No Place Like Home by Felt Fusion. And I'm going to turn this into a pair of Christmas socks. I know I shouldn't be talking about Christmas before Halloween, but times are ticking, tick tock, tick tock. And we've only got so many weeks to get the Christmas knitting done, haven't we? So I'm going to be looking for test knitters for this in my next episode. So if you've got nothing on your needles and you would really like to do some Christmas socks, keep a wee eye on Ravelry because I'll add some more details to Ravelry because I won't be vlogging for another fortnight, so you're not going to see it until then. But keep a wee eye on Ravelry and I'll add some more details to there next week. Okay, and you can let me know if you want to test knit this one. But there'll be one sock done anyway and I'll be working on the second one so I can let you know next week. Right. Do you remember a couple of episodes ago I told you that I would show you my Halloween houses? Well, this is one of them. Here she is. I'm just going to spin her around. She's on my wee ro rotating cutting mat. So I'll just spin her around so you can see her. I call her a her. Isn't she pretty? This was a machine embroidery class that I took part in. We didn't make this at class. You just went along once a fortnight for a couple of hours to do the the, embroid the machine embroidery class. It feels really lazy because you don't actually do anything. You just sit there and the machine does it all and you just go on with your knitting or your crochet. But I had seen this pattern online and I asked the ladies in the shop, I'm just going to switch the light on, okay? I had seen this pattern online and asked the lady in the shop if I could come along and use the machines to make this. I don't know how much difference that will make actually, if you can see inside the wee windows. 
but um, they let me do that. They said, yeah, I could do it. If I come up against any problems, I was on my own because it wasn't it wasn't a pattern that they could use to teach. So but I just got got to go along for two hours once a fortnight and made a different wee bit. There's a wee ghosty on that wall. There's a wee bat on there too. And then there's a wee cat there. You've probably seen that already as I've been spinning it around. But each piece is made individually. So this wee wall here had to be made and then it's got two roof pieces and there's this wee door wall here and this wee side bit. There's lots and lots of wee pieces and it's lovely when you light it up at night. The wee lights on. The wee turret as well had to be made. There's a wee window in there too. But it took me about seven months to make this. I think I started at the end of January, beginning of February. And because I'm all, I was only there once a fortnight and for two hours, it took quite a while because you'd maybe only get one piece done at, a class, at each class. But I love it. It's one of my favourite things that I've ever made. I'd love to live in a wee house like this. I'll put a wee video in at the end of this vlog with the rest of my wee houses just so you can see what they look like because they look better when they're lit up and it's slightly dark. She's really cute, isn't she? Right, I'm just going to pop this out of the way. And we can move on to patchwork and quilting. Right, I finished my rail fence quilt. But if you've watched my layering up and quilting tutorial, you'll already know that. So this is the top. Okay. It's difficult to get a full length shot into this and the backing's on. Now I had the green for the backing but I didn't have enough of it because I only had a metre and I needed a metre and a quarter. Never read the instructions right do I? Even my own patterns. Anyway, I bought some, some of this grey cat fabric and another wee bit of the orange cats and I've just pieced it together. So the back's a wee bit more interesting than it would be and I quilted it with a spider web. I did, it's just straight lines to make my spider web but you'll see that in the tutorial. I didn't dent it in if you know what I mean. That kind of stylized um, spider web. I'm trying to find a spider web but I've got spider web fabric on the front of mine and it's just straight lines so I copied that just kind of went with that so it's the same okay so the quilting tutorial is already there for anybody that needs that and I've still to upload the binding tutorial now I've got it videoed but I need to get it edited before I can upload it and unfortunately that it may be next weekend before I can get that up but I stitch my binding on from the front um, I stitch on, the raw edges go together, you've made your binding and the raw edges go together, raw edge of the quilt, raw edge of the binding and I stitch it on at three eighths of an inch away from the edge and then if, once it's all stitched on I fold it over and I hand stitch it at the back but that'll all be in the binding tutorial and I'll show you how to mitre your corners Now see the same as my sock tutorials, anything that you watch, any tutorials that I do that's the way I do it. I can only show you the way I do it, but there are other ways that you can layer up and pin your quilt together. When you are layering up your three layers, getting it ready for quilting, you can spray baste it with a 505 spray or you can hand baste it. You can sit and hand baste, stitch it all together like that. There's also wee plastic clips you can get that you can fire and it holds it together. But I like to pin it, so that's why I've showed you how to pin it. But there's other there's other tutorials out there you can watch on YouTube if you want to find other ways to do it. When it comes to the binding, I'm going to show you mitre corners because that's how I do it. That's how I like to do it. But I know some ladies will just bind the two sides. They'll bind, they'll bind one side, bind the other side, and then they'll bind the top and the bottom. And they'll just fold over the edges of their fabric so there's no raw edges shown when they do the top and the bottom. But as I say, my tutorial will show you how to mitre your corners. That's how I've always bound a quilt, so that's how I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, I quite like mitered corners, and I've always been told my mitered corners are quite neat, so I'll show you how to do it that way. Okay, so that's me. I've got my Halloween, my Halloween real fence quilts already. I'll be sitting with that over my lap in Halloween, watching some Halloween movies. I've got my knitting bag, as you know, with my socks in. And I made my little notebook to keep all my knitting notes in there. And then after doing that, I was able to make a couple of needle cozies. So I've got that one with the grey cat fabric. And I've also made that wee one that my Helter Skelter socks are in. So I've got some more needle cozies. That was quite good. And I also made a couple of masks. So there we go. Just a couple of face masks. See, show you how they fit. 
they fit quite flat in there. I'm quite flat top and bottom. They go, it goes nice with my wee cat ears. Anyway. So I made a couple of these. One for me, one for my daughter. Just green at the back. Just the green fabric at the back. These were loosely modelled on, you know, the disposable covers that you get. Disposable face covers. But I felt at the side this was too wide. And it was gaping at the side when we put them on. So I just made it a wee bit. It is a wee bit shorter. You can see that. Mine's is a wee bit shorter. But I just made my folds bigger. So it's the same amount of fabric that's in these ones. But it's just less width when you get to the side. And they fit all ears quite well. There's no gapes at the side and there's no gapes at the top or underneath. And this bit at the bottom is just black because I ran out of the grey fabric. But it's under your chin. You don't see that bit anyway. So, and I made my daughter. I made her too. I made her that colour. I made her that colour way. They're kind of reversible almost if she had to. And I also made her a green one with the orange cats in the inside. As well as being at university, she works in a local supermarket. So she gets to wear these to her work, which is quite nice in the lead up to Halloween. Um, the only other thing I wanted to show you relating to patchwork and quilting is this quilt here. I don't know if, if you've watched my quilting tutorial, you'll already have seen this quilt. But it's got lots of wee pandas on the back. I love pandas. See when you're young and people call you names and they just put a P in front of your name and it's like I was always Amanda the Panda and I was like, right, okay, fine, I like that. I love pandas. But here we go. This is a granny square quilt. And I'll try and lift it up. I'm just peeking around to see if you can see how much you can see. I'll move it over. Oh, I think it hit the microphone there. These were all leftover pieces from making some cushions. And this is the cushion here. This is a cathedral windows cushion. This was made to teach a patchwork and quilting workshop at Presswick again. Usually when you see cathedral windows cushions, they're done in a light coloured fabric, but I did mine in dark coloured fabric because I thought if you look up at a stained glass window, it's usually dark, isn't it? With the bright colours, a pop of glass in the middle. So these are um, fussy cut. These wee squares here are all fussy cut. They're fussy cut on point, so they, they stand on a point. And that wastes quite a lot of your fabric when you've got half a metre or maybe three quarters of a metre of fabric to fussy cut all your wee bits out. You've quite a bit of fabric left over. And that's what I used to cut out all my little squares. All these little squares. So this is a granny square quilt. And the only thing that's wrong with mine is I've cut my corners off. Can you see here? I've cut the, cut the points off. Um, when, it, when I came to putting it together, see these wee bits here, the wee half squares, the wee kind of diamonds there? I only had enough fabric to cut out the diamonds. I didn't have enough to have an extra quarter inch on, so that's why I lost my points going round all my squares. But it doesn't really matter, does it? It was just nice to use all this fabric up. But I used this, this quilt was actually used to film a patchwork and quilting tutorial back in May. And I didn't publish it because the quality the quality of it just wasn't very good. We use a phone camera and it wasn't very good. So I had to film it again. So I used my, my, my latest quilt. But I'm going to get this one. It's all layered up and it's pinned. It's been sitting over my spinning machine like this since May. So I'm going to get it done. That's this week's job, this week coming. I'm going to get this quilted and then get the binding on. Because the binding's sitting there waiting to go as well. So that'll be me have another quilt for Halloween. And once this is finished, I want to start a Christmas quilt. I've got some lovely Christmas fabric that I've had in my stash for quite some time and I've been adding to it. It's, a, it's an outer print fabric and I've been adding to it whenever I can find some and I've got a nice pattern for it, so I'll show you that next time. But shouldn't I really keep mentioning Christmas, should I? That's all I've got to show you patchwork and quilting wise this week. So now we're going to move on to crochet. And I've been working away on my granny square top. Here we go. Here she is. I call everything she, don't I? Now I've tried it on. I moved those straps over, the front straps. I moved them over, moved them in one square. So now I've got two squares at my armholes rather than just the one. Um, and I've crocheted the, the little scallop, the little shell edging. I've done that all the way around the, the neck and at the front. And I've done it around here. 
So now all the yarn I've got left, I've got two full balls left over. So now I can just add to the length of my body. And I know it looks quite short, but I've tried it on and it comes to maybe just at the top of my jeans. So it'll not take much more, but I've got two balls there. So hopefully I'm going to have that finished for the end of the month. I don't think there was anybody else took part in my little crochet along, but hey -ho, that's my own fault. I don't share enough stuff in social media, do I? Just expect everybody to magically know what's going on. But the only thing I won't have done for the end of the month is the ends. I've got to sew in all the ends, weave in all these ends. Look at all of those. Look at them. Dozens of them. Dozens and dozens. Hundreds and thousands. So what I might just do, I'll get this finished for the end of the month and then I'm going to pop it onto my mannequin and I think I'll sew in the ends maybe two or three squares a day until it's done. So it's not like I need it just now anyway, we're, we're approaching winter. But maybe this time, maybe in a few months, once the nicer weather's back in, getting into spring, summer next year, we'll all be allowed out and about a wee bit more and I'll have a nice new top to wear. Now you would think weaving in all these ends would put you off of doing another granny square garment, wouldn't you? But no, I found another thing. Where is my... Where's my tablet? <clears throat> Look at that. Can you see that? Okay. How pretty is that jumper? Um, there's one of the model wearing it. There she is. Isn't that lovely? I really think I'm going to have to make this jumper. It's really, really pretty. There's another one. It's just granny squares at the front and granny squares at the back. Zoom in on that a wee bit. So, granny squares at the front, granny squares at the back. And then you crochet on that nice big snuggly collar and the sleeves as well. It's just really pretty, isn't it? But it's called Revival. Revival, a granny square jumper and it's by HG Designs Crochet. And I only found it because it came up in my Instagram feed. But I'm really liking that jumper right now. So I'm going to try and get this one finished as soon as I can. I'll leave the ends and sew them in next month. I'm, I'm not worried about getting the ends sewn in. I'll do that a wee bit of time if I have to. But I'm going to keep all those ends. I bet you I've got a bit of ball of wool there and ends. After that, I am going to concentrate on my little birds. Do you remember the ugly duckling I showed you? I want to get the, the rest of the birds that came along. It was a free PDF with this book for all the baby birds. So I'm going to go on with that because I really do want them for Christmas or most of them at least. But I suppose you can't just have like seven birds of Christmas, can you? You're going to have to get all 12 done. That's a challenge. And the only other thing I wanted to share with you was this wee book here. This is a lovely book. You can get this in the works just now. It's, it's only £4 I think in the works, but it's absolutely lovely. And it gives you lots and lots of wee butterflies, there's beetles, there's snails, all, all these wee things that you can just crochet to make different wee, different wee beasties. But it's a lovely wee book. I'm, I'll try and flick through it, I don't want to show you the pattern bit, but it's not just um, a pattern book, it's also got some stories in, I'll see if I can show you. It's got stories about all the wee... All the wee creatures and how they start off. And what they turn into and how they transform. This is what I'm making just now. Making the wee ladybird. It's cute, isn't it? Um, I'm not very good at flicking through these books, am I? And showing you them. But there's butterflies, as I say, snails. There's also... Um, there's also food for your ladybirds to eat. And I'm going to enjoy watching my wee ladybird munching in these. See if I can find them. Wee aphids. And I'm not even going to feel bad about making them and letting my ladybird eat them because they were eating my roses all summer long. So, hell mend them. Anyway, you start off and you crochet the wee egg. And then your egg will start to grow and you will realise that there's a wee, there's a wee larva in there. And out he pops. And he'll crawl about and eat up, eat up leaves and eat the corner of the leaves and stuff like that. And then once it's time, he will pop inside his little pupa. And then when it's time, he'll come out and he'll have changed into a ladybird. 
Sadly, you're not seeing the ladybird today because I'm still working on the little ladybird wings. But they're so cute, aren't they? And it's just this Katona cotton yarn that you use. And you can buy that in little 25 gram balls. I think that's what this is. Yep, just, just be tw tiny 25 gram balls. You don't have to stick to the cotton yarn, you can use whatever you've got lying about. If you've got some lots and lots of scraps of double knitting, you could use that to make them, couldn't you? My daughter loved that kind of stuff when she was wee, going out and collecting snails and collecting caterpillars and trying to keep them as pets. She was always really annoyed when I wouldn't let her keep them in the house, mind you. But they're really cute, aren't they? So that's the next one there that I want to make. But it's really good the way as well that you're, you're only making one wee body part. And he's supposed to have a wee hat. I'll try and get him finished for next time. But see if you've got a wee one in your life and you're not getting to see much of them just now. I'm thinking of you, Madeline. Get your granny to make you these. But all you do is you make the wee... There's one wee body part. There's eggs. And the eggs can be used for the different, the different creatures that come out. So you can have one wee egg. A couple of wee larvae. You've got the different pupa stages as well. And then the wee wings are actually attached on. You just crochet a wee band, a wee black band that goes round here and it'll fit on them. So they're all interchangeable and they can you can mix and match them. But how lovely would that be? If you're not getting to see the wee, the wee ones in your life, you could make them some of these, couldn't you? And then stick them in the post. And then however you do your video chatting, you could read the stories together once they receive their wee, their wee beasties. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to share with you today. Um, so I am going to go watch a wee episode or two of The Alienist. Have you been watching that on Netflix? It's really, really good. We re-watched season one just last week because we knew the second season was coming on. So we're really enjoying that just now. We're trying to only watch an episode or two a day so we don't binge watch it all in one, one night. But I'm going to go watch that. Cast on my The Sea Word socks and I'll let you see those on online. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.